Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Message queues are a great way to make your application more resilient and reliable, but also scalable by leveraging the competing consumer's pattern, which allows you to do more work concurrently. I'll explain what it is, how it works, its benefits, as well as some other issues that you need to consider. So here's an example of using a message queue. We have a client, let's say this is a web app, and it's an e-commerce site, and we make an HTTP request to our HTTP API for placing an order. So when we place that order, instead of our HTTP API doing the actual logic of saving a record in our database, rather what we do is we create a message, we send that to the message queue, and then we immediately go back to the client and tell them, hey, your order's been placed, here's some reference number, but we didn't actually really perform the work of placing the order, we simply just pass that message to the message queue. So our API is the producer, it's just producing messages, sending those to the message queue, and then we have our consumer, which is picking up those messages from the message queue, and it's actually doing the work. So it's actually creating the order, interacting with our database, and while that's happening, we still have our API, our producer, creating new messages and putting those into the message queue. Once our consumer has actually finished processing a message and it's created that particular order, all it does then is picks up the next message in the queue and performs the work that it needs to. So the way you can scale your application or service is by implementing the competing consumers pattern, which is just basically saying instead of having one consumer, like I just showed in my example, you have many consumers and they're all competing for the next message in the queue. So they're all trying to pull off the next message, perform that work. Once they're done, try to go and get the next message if there's a message available. So to illustrate competing consumers, I have more than one consumer for our message queue. So our producer's producing a message and we're using round robin, so the first consumer, because it's not doing anything yet, gets that message. Our producer is still producing messages, and because our second consumer is available and our first is processing message, it's gonna get that message to process. But our producer is still chugging away, it's creating messages, and in queues another one, queues uh, another message. And then finally our second consumer actually finished processing that message, so it's available to process more work. So it goes ahead and gets the next message in the queue. So competing consumers allows you to scale horizontally. You can just keep adding consumers. So as you're producing more messages for maybe multiple producers, they're just going to the appropriate uh, consumers that need to process those messages. As they get processed, they just open up availability and process the next message in the queue. That means that as you're adding more messages from more producers, you can just add more consumers to keep up to what's available to process in the queue. So this also applies to publish, subscribe, and topics. So if you have consumer groups, and in this case I have a consumer group here in this darker blue, and it has three consumers. They're competing consumers within this group. So if they're subscribed to a topic, and we have this other consumer group below here that's subscribed to the same topic, these two are competing with each other. So that means that as a message comes in for that particular topic, that message is then distributed to both consumer groups but only one consumer within each group will get the message. So I mentioned resiliency at the beginning, and this is why it makes your services more resilient, is that if we're talking about placing an order, and that was the action that the user did that created the message from the API, it went and did that and placed that message on the message queue. And we returned to the user, we said, okay, we placed your order, you'll get an email later, here's your reference number. But we didn't actually place the, the order, it just went to the message queue. But because our producer doesn't know about our consumer and that it's online, it can be offline. It might be unavailable, there's issues, and we just keep accepting orders from our website and we just place those in the message queue. And then once a, uh, our consumer comes back online for whatever reason the issue was, it resolved that, then it can just start picking apart messages. And if we need to add some uh, scale to this and we need to add more consumers, we can add more consumers to try to catch up to what all the messages that are actually in the queue. So there's generally two issues that I see with competing consumers that people need to consider. The first is moving the bottleneck, and the second is message ordering. What I mean by moving the bottleneck is if your message queue was the bottleneck because there was a lot of messages and you're adding more consumers to keep up with those messages, that means that you're doing more work. And if that work entails interacting with say a database and all the consumers are interacting with the same database, you've moved the bottleneck from the message queue to the database. Can the database now keep up with all that work from all those consumers? So the second issue is with message ordering and the thought that a message is gonna be processed in sequence of how it was queued. And that's not really the case. It will get sent to a consumer, generally FIFO, first in, first out, but that doesn't mean it's actually gonna get processed in time. 
So what I mean by that is let's say we have this golden message here, which is the first part of our sequence, and it goes to the consumer, that consumer is processing it. We have the second unrelated message, it's okay. And then subsequently we have another message that is directly related to this first message. But it, this first message hasn't been processed yet by the consumer. If we have code that's consuming the second message and is expecting that whatever this had to do is finished, it may not have uh, actually finished yet. So you have some expectation that you're gonna consume messages and process them in a certain order isn't gonna happen. You're, you're running these concurrently. So it doesn't mean that you're gonna actually do any particular processing in an exact order. You're gonna receive them first in, first out, but that doesn't mean that you've actually completed processing. Message queues are a great way to add reliability and resiliency to your services. And using competing consumers for those queues is a great way to scale, horizontally scale to do more work. But when you do more work, realize the other impacted services from adding all those consumers. Also be aware of message ordering. Some queues guarantee FIFO, first in, first out, but that doesn't mean you're processing them sequentially. You're running things concurrently. I also wanna say thank you to all the members who joined my Code Opinion channel, including Sean Paul Neckelman. I really appreciate the support, thank you. If you're interested in joining, go to my channel and click the join button. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And as always, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.